My name is Colonel Freddy Joseph Onata. I am the Chief Executive Officer for Azalendo Sako, a Sako for the Ministry of Defense and UPDF that was established in 2005, to be specific, on, on 22nd September. Uh, our common bond covers Ministry of Defense personnel, civilians, UPDF personnel, the retired personnel of the UPDF, civilians working under our Zalindo circle, as well as our spouses and children. Uh, going forward, we intend to have the bond expanded, but for now that's what it is. Um, the role that we play is to improve the welfare of our members through financial intermediation. What this one means is that uh, we accept savings from our members, receive savings from our members, and then give them credit at affordable rates. So that is the role that we play. We also play a role of training and education of our members so that they are able to understand the challenges of managing money, however small it is. Perhaps the greatest challenge we have as society is that uh, people get money, they get exposed to money when they don't have the skills of managing money and they end up messing up themselves and perhaps even messing up the institutions where they work. So with UPDF and Wazalendo Sako, we have taken that as one of the key roles of the Sako, educating the members on the use of financial services. What, we, what role we play in the community and the country, basically it is financial intermediation, um, extending credit, promoting financial inclusion for the personnel of the UPDF, and we believe that uh, we are part of those people who are underserved by other financial institutions because of the requirements. Here we don't require a member to have collateral in order to access services. And we do this in furtherance of our vision, which requires us to be a strong and self-sustaining circle that drives the development of its members. How do we become strong? We are looking at generating larger numbers of our members and ensuring that uh, we have strong financials we have enough of internally generated funds to be able to extend credit to our members. Driving development to our members means that we should have various services in terms of savings and credits that go to our members so that they are able to engage in their productive agenda for wealth creation. In terms of our mission, we are given a mission to mobilize funds in order to provide affordable financial services that effectively improve our members' welfare. Here, we look at three issues. First is to mobilize funds through the savings, uh, through putting back what we get as a profit, to grow the circle, and also where necessary borrowing from reputable institutions that if we, if we get liquidity challenges. So in terms of affordability, here we are looking at the pricing of our services. Our interest rate on savings ranges from four to nine on fixed deposit, on other accounts to seven. But also our loan products are fairly priced. We have three types of rates. We have the rate for the salary loans, which is 13% and 12 for agriculture loans. But we also have a 13% for cash flow loans, a new product that we launched last year, targeting people who have projects that are generating money and are able to pay from other sources other than salary. So based on that, we think that we are doing a great job in dealing with issues of getting our members and households engaged in production. What are we contributing to the country? A great deal. One, we're mobilizing capital for production through savings. That's a great thing. Secondly, we're creating jobs. Every member who borrows a loan from Wazalendo Sako invests that loan in a community where they come from or where they live. And it take an example of construction, it creates immediately jobs for those who work in the sites. For the whole time the building is under construction, people are earning money. So that is very important for us. In terms of uh, the general public, we also create employment. Here in Wazalendo Circle, we have a total workforce of 254 staff. 147 are uniformed, 107 are civilians. And those civilians pay taxes in form of pay as you earn, and that's a big contribution to the government of the Republic of Uganda. We do a lot of projects here, including construction projects where we buy materials, and all those materials are vetted at 18%. We buy water, which is vetted at 18%. We 
we buy other foodstuffs which are averted everything that we do. So we contribute directly and indirectly in form of taxes as a circle, making a big contribution towards the development of a country. Uh, the other benefit that we have is that we invest in communities. Last year, we were in Mbara, Great Mbarara region during Teresita, and we donated delivery beds to some hospitals. We were in Greater Elegon sub-region. We donated, donated mattresses to hospitals and our corporate social investment. Last, this year, we have been in Busoga sub-region, where we did the same. We donated mama kits, um, delivery beds, and many other things that we gave books for schools, primary schools. So that's a big contribution. That's why perhaps government would be intervening, but we're also taking a step to go there. So we make a contribution on behalf of government. And with, in so doing, we are creating a good image for the, for the circle and also for the UPDF because we recruit from the public and we have to give back to the public that gives us people. So my Zalendo is doing a great, great piece of work in the communities where we in terms of justifiable evidence that the circle is contributing to the welfare of the members, even if we don't look at those other areas, there is a great deal that we can check through. Number one, we need to look at the savings that we have mobilized and the capital. Before we had the Wazalendo circle, our people were struggling. But we have been able to mobilize up to $240 billion in share capital. We have been able to mobilize up to $445 billion in savings. We have, we have an outstanding loan portfolio of 748 billion in the hands of the members. We have cumulatively disbursed up to 2.5 trillion since we started giving loans in 2009. So when you look at that, it means that it is actually justifiable evidence that we are making a contribution to the lives of our members. But also in terms of understanding uh, the use of financial services. There is a great deal. We do investment training for our members, enterprise selection. Very many of these have, have had great impact on the way members conduct themselves and how they use their money. So we think that when we continue along those lines, we are going to achieve a great deal. Uh, in terms of um, our engagement with the communities, I've already mentioned that, that we do engage with the community through our corporate social investment function which has given us a great linkage with the members of the public. And we also make donations to other circles. For example, last year we had donated two motorcycles to a circle in Igara, in which we called Igara Tea Growers Circle. We gave them two motorcycles. We also donated computers to starting circles. When we visited them, when we gave them training, we realized that their challenge was record keeping. Because for you to run a circle, Good records management is very, very critical. You must know your members, you must profile them and know them. You can't do them on a, a book. So you must have a system that will enable you to do that. So arising from that understanding, from our previous experience, we are able to make such donations to circles to enable them improve their records keeping. But most importantly also, we do training for circles at our cost. We go and mobilize them, go and train them, share with them the best practices, even today, this morning. We had a, a delegation from the Central African Republic led by their Minister of Defense who are here to benchmark on how they can start a circle. So we are crossing borders with sharing knowledge, not just here. And I think that is very, very important. It's also important that we build other circles because when we have these many circles we are, which are viable, then we are able to actualize the financial inclusion, bring those ones who are not productive into the productive arena so that they are able to generate monies for their own households and transform our societies that we live in. So those are some of the things that we are able to do. In terms of milestones, quite a number of them. The first one, first of all, is getting members of the armed forces and the members on the common bond to be able to save. Saving is a sickness to many people. There are people who start today and tomorrow they fall out. So ensuring sustain ability to save from our members to others a big milestone. Then the other one is enabling them to access credit. In the past, uh, and even now, if you go to compare with our rates with other intermediaries who deal with the financial intermediation here, you find out that our, our rates are very cheap, from, 13, 13, from 12 to 13.5. Not many institutions can do that. But overall, at the end of the day, this money we take from the members, but it comes back to them 
in form of a dividend and interest on their savings. So whether it is relatively priced like that or not, the benefit goes to the member in many forms. So we think that uh, we have achieved, achieved quite some good milestones in terms of the finances, but also in terms of welfare improvement of the members. Many people have been able to educate their children. Many have been able to do engage in production, agriculture, and farming. Many have constructed houses. Many have bought vehicles and other assets land, which ordinarily they wouldn't do if it was a land circle was there. I can assure you, if you look back 20, 18 years ago, 18 years ago, and you take our forces back 18 years ago, majority of them wouldn't be where they are today. We speak with confidence because we do M&E and &E and we're able to check these figures. When we started, we were able to give a loan up to 5 million shillings, but today we give loans up to a tune of 500 million for cash flow loans and 350 million for salary loans. First stop there. Close that. I'm going, I'm coming to that. It's the last one. I'm still on the milestones. So in terms of uh, milestones, we have also been able to extend the delivery of our services. When we started, we had one branch. That was Bombo. <clears throat> As I speak today, we have 19 networked branches. And out of those, 10 are cash operating. Again, out of the 10, six of them are outside the barracks. So for me, that is another huge milestone. The other one that we have been able to, to expand the number of delivery channels to our members. Our members can access services through the OTC over the counter in post bank, but also through our branches of Wazalendo Sapo. Our members can also access our services through the ATM card in partnership with post bank. And still our members can access services through the mobile banking platform, both on the app and the USSD code, which is status 09 hash. So when you look at all those, it is, it is, to me, that's a great milestone, They're taking the services closer to the member. So we have achieved a lot of milestones. The other one is that we have opened an investment arm. The law requires circles to restrict themselves to savings and credit, and then investments that are risk-free, such as fixed deposits, treasury bills, and treasury bonds. Now, there are opportunities outside there when you have money which you don't need to use. So for us as a circle, we have established a business arm that is able to, that we have put some money on, is able to take on such investments. Current, currently, we are dealing in real estate. We have estates in Matuga, Bulamu, and when we come from the AGM, we should be establishing an estate on Masaka Road, another one on Jinja Road, and perhaps in Tebe Road, so that our people have a choice where they want to buy plots and they do their development. I, I am... I am mindful that uh, you, you, people would want to know why Wazalendo Circle is succeeding where others are failing. Number one is that we have a clear strategic direction as summarized by in our vision, which is to be strong and a self-sustaining circle that drives the development of our members. We drill this vision to every member such that when they are making their savings, they understand why they are doing so. They understand that we are contributing to the strengths that we desire to have. We have a clear mission that tells us that we must mobilize funds and provide affordable financial services that effectively improve members' welfare. So when we are talking to members, they know that it is their duty to bring the funds. We mobilize funds from them and not any other person. The other one is that we have very clear core values on which we are built on. Integrity, transparency, accountability, teamwork, member, member service excellence. So we are built around those. In everything that we do, we rotate around those. We believe that when we work according to our core values, which is now part of our culture, then members are able to trust us. They are able to be confident in the services that we offer, and they will be very loyal to us. So that is very, very critical for us. But also we have other success factors when you remove those. Many circles are struggling with challenges of leadership and governance. We sorted that. We have a clear leadership selection criteria and a clear staff and personnel recruitment criteria. 
that sets the qualification experience, but also the discipline. And then the other one is that when we bring member, when we bring staff here, we induct them to the Wazalendo culture. When we recruit, we cannot recruit a manager that you can come to Wazalendo Circle and be a manager. We grow our people through responsibility. In so doing, they get immersed in our culture and they're able to deliver to our expectations. We also have a clear service profile. We have a service charter that defines the time that a person should take before he accesses a service. For example, if you apply for a loan, our loan should be, if there is no problem, a member should be able to get that loan within 24 hours. And sometimes we go, we go faster than that, that a member can go to a branch, put a loan application form. If he has no issues, within two hours you have the money, whether it is 100 million or 200 million. So that service charter has also helped us to define. Then, of course, we have a well-written down strategic plan, which we are going to review this year to align it to where we want to go in the next day, remaining five, two years of the strategic plan. Then also have a clear business plan, which tells how we shall do our business. Then finally, we have well-written down policies, which we teach our members every day. In the morning here, when people come, we spend 30 minutes to take people through this policy so they understand. What, do, what does that one help us to achieve? You will not say that you made the mistake because you did not know what the policy was providing for. We have taken you through it. So this is the kind of culture I'm talking about that has helped us to be very, very successful. And then the other one is that we, we focus more on internally generated resources. Many circles are struggling because they believe that they should survive on donations, grants, and loans. So for us, loans probably contribute around, because we also borrow, when we get, like last year, we got challenges of when, when salaries were enhanced for senior officers, the demand for loans went above what we had projected. So we had to go to UDB and Microfinance Support Center to get some money to cushion that demand. And after that, we went back to normal lending. So we focus on more of internally generated uh, funds. Find our financing mix could be around 97% internally financed. So that is also very, very critical. And it is perhaps an area where other circles are struggling. The other issue is um, partnerships. Partnerships. We, we, many, many times people ask us, when, was, when will Wazalendo Circle become a commercial bank? And the, my answer is candid and straightforward. We shall not become a commercial bank. Because the services that we need in a commercial bank, we simply need to develop a partnership. And we shall get the services for our members through that partnership. For example, the ATM card is not ours. We got it in partnership with the post bank. So there's no need for us to become a commercial bank because all the services that we need, we shall get. So circles must understand the importance of generating proper partnerships. In terms of technology, there are things that technology that you cannot buy, even if you are as rich as Wazalendo Circle. You must lease them. So which kind of partner is giving you some of these services is very, very critical. So partnerships is one of the critical success factors, the right partners to do business with. Very, very important. Then, of course, there are strategy guidance from the UPDF. Each time we come up with ideas, we also share with them. We want to do this. And they also make their input. And when they make their input, we come and study what they're saying and see whether it is in tandem with what we are doing. And then we go. We do that without interference. It is us who go and say, we are trying to do this. What is your view? Because at the end of the day, they are part of the common bond and they are members. So, and they, some of them are more exposed perhaps than we are. So sharing with them means getting more knowledge on what we are doing. Then, of course, the strategic investments that we do in the community also help us a lot. Help us to, to deal with the, some of our challenges. And then, of course, we also have um, an internal insurance policy of loan protection fund. When we get loans which go bad, some of, sometimes some of our soldiers, after getting loans, they desert. So when they desert, how do we manage? We write off those loans after some time. We look for them as we write off the loans here using the Loan Protection Fund. For every member who borrows a loan here, you make a certain contribution to that fund. So these are some of the strategies. But the most critical one is the Retirement Fund account. Among the savings products, we have a fund where everybody contributes 10% of their salary. We agreed in an AGM. I think that was in 2010 and 2013. So that, that account is not accessible until a member is retiring. 
and if you retire you may choose to keep with us in which case the money will remain but if you choose to go you will go with that money and it helps you that one has helped us to achieve two things number one it has guaranteed liquidity in the circle so we can have the money all the time because we are sure nobody will come and take this money away <clears throat> then the other one is that it has helped us to market the circle in that now a person who is retiring has substantial amounts of money here as he waits for money from government. So even if government takes six months before it pays your first pension and gratuity, a member is able to survive on what we have here. So that level of preparedness is very, very crucial in cash flow management. Because immediately they retire, the salary stops coming. And when the salary stops coming, then what? A member must have a fallback position. So these are some of the things that make us attractive because members know that we can be trusted with the, their challenges. Yes, we all, like any other organization, we, we, we have our own, our own challenges that we face. Number one is that definitely there's a challenge of ever-growing demand. I said earlier that um, our maximum loan size is 500 million for cash flow loans and then 350 million for salary-based loans. Now, that should tell you that uh, in many cases, sometimes we are faced with situations where the demand for loans exceeds the money that we have. So we need to keep on mobilizing savings from the members. <clears throat> then the other challenge, the challenge of uh, ever-growing demand against relatively limited scope of savings. That is one of our challenges. Now the other challenge is that of course some, some of our members get our loans and run away. And then, of course, the other one is that we have some people borrowing from Sako here. They also go and borrow com from commercial banks. And they begin struggling to pay all this money. But we are engaging the Credit Reference Bureau so that we get to know the level of indebtedness of our people in other financial institutions so that we are able to give them loans which do not, not give them a lot of stress. The other challenges we have is that it's a general one in the industry the issue of regulation, which is not yet clear. We have a two laws that regulate the SACO sector. We have the Cooperative Societies Act, as amended in 2020. Then we also have the Tier 4 microfinance institutions of 2016. All these laws have different regulatory and reporting requirements. And so for us, we are in the middle there. Those are some of the challenges. Um, the other one is the high cost of technology. Technology changes rapidly. What you buy today, after two years, you need an upgrade. And all these upgrades come with a very high cost to the organization. And so, but we have to deal, we have to live with them. Then uh, the other challenge, perhaps worth mentioning, is the issue of the cost of training. The cost of training. But that one, we cushion it. We believe we no longer look at training as a cost. We look at it as an investment because it has helped us to open up the minds of our people to see the direction where we are taking them and to understand why it is important for them to be with us. Now, in terms of our future plans, first of all, our future plan is that we must remain strong in line with our vision. And we are going to do this in three ways. Number one, we are going to continue recruiting from UPDF and the Ministry of Defense and our families uh, we need to focus on the families now because they are smaller numbers in terms of, so one focus on the families to join the circle the second area is to open the common bond partially open the common bond to allow other members of the public especially those in organized institutions to join us where we shall sign mous with them in terms of membership then the other one is to grow the business arm to be able to do much more than they are currently doing. Apparently, we are doing a feasibility study on uh, getting into agro-processing as an area and then low-cost housing, where we shall give, get partner with the company, we buy the land, we build and sell these houses to our members cheaply. So we want to go beyond just giving somebody credit. Very big plans, but achievable. Achievable when we go there, go there strategically. So those are our future plans. My 
final comments to the members, first of all, of Wazalendo Sako, is to congratulate them upon the milestones that we have registered over the 18 years and for believing in themselves and believing in us. The other one is to thank the members of the public who have given us a platform to perform uh, the leadership of UPDF for always giving us strategic direction. And then, of course, the government of the Republic of Uganda for creating an enabling environment for businesses to thrive, circles to thrive, and for us to express ourselves as circles. And finally, the media fraternity for the platforms that we always get to give out our information, to share ideas, and to reach out people. We can't reach out to them on our own, but through the various media platforms, we are able to reach people through, through the social media, newspapers, like now this perhaps will be published and people will read. So we also want to thank the media for being part of our journey. We, con we continue considering you a very important ally in our quest to improve the lives of our people and contribute to the transformation of our country. I have used 25 minutes, I told you. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the area as well, above our army, like this in Congo, it was a rainbow. It being now that it is bigger than some of the ones here. Are we seeing it like opening up other branches outside the country? We cannot open outside the, our borders, but we have liaison offices. We get a person, one or two, three people there who will coordinate her. Because even when our members are outside the country, they need the services. They will need the, they need to save, they need the loans. They need money to support their families. So we establish liaison offices in outposts which are able to coordinate our circles. But we can't go and open a branch. Even our bylaws do not allow us to open a branch outside our borders. But we can have a liaison office to coordinate. An office in Somalia to serve the Artemis, and we have a liaison office with the forces which are operating under Operation Suja. Yeah. What informs our liaison offices and branches is the concentration of our forces. We know that where people are concentrated, they need services, so we take them closer to them. Seven hundred and forty-eight billion. Mm, Forty-eight. Uh, first of all, our target, uh, our targeted, uh, the biggest target we have is to have a base of one trillion by twenty twenty-five. That is our target. The rest will follow. We set the target for assets. The rest will work towards that. Consolidate loan protection fund. Yes. Uh, how much do you have in that? Apparently we have two, uh, apparently we have twenty billion. It's called loan protection fund. This one was drawn from our experience with the leads insurance. We were, we had been insuring our loans with the leads insurance, but of course because of the challenges by that time our fo our forces were highly operational, so the desertions and issues of death overwhelmed the leads, and they were not able to pay us. Then we had to think how can we do this. We wrote to the registrar to allow us to open a loan protection fund, which is a form of insurance but internally, whereby if a loan is, has gone, has not been paid for 180 days, we go to that fund and pick money and, and write it off. Or initially, when we started, this money would go, all of it. But now, as the, the numbers grow, the volumes of the money that are borrowed grow, the fund has also been growing. So you find in the months we are able to pay off the loans which have gone bad and remain with some balance. Now the balance that remains, we invest it in treasury bonds and keep on growing the fund. So the whole fund, 20 billion, it not, it's not necessarily what members have continued, but also the interest that we earn from the treasury bonds when we buy bonds, when we have money that has remained. So that tells you that uh, there is something that we are doing. Also, we are studying the possibility of creating a medical fund which will cater for all our members. So we shall discuss how we shall be working towards it, future prospect. 
instead of uh, having medical insurance where we pay money and whether someone has got treatment or not, we have already paid. We are looking at starting a medical fund. We could pull, get a pool of money here, then we treat our people. We believe that uh, people don't take all the money. We shall be able to build it also, like we have built the loan protection fund. <coughs> Uh, from the, uh, from the members should expect, um, first of all, uh, members should expect a very good meeting that will uh, show very good levels of uh, management of the circle and a reasonable surplus that is going to be declared to them of about 72.2 billion Uganda shillings, as was made last year. And therefore, from that, they should expect a, a handsome dividend of probably around 1,900 and something. So that's what the members should expect. They should also expect very good proposals that will enable us to operationalize the budget of this year to make us work better. I they, they, they are about, we are waiting, because we are estimating that, uh, of course we go with the proposal. We are going to propose a dividend, but don't report on that. We are going to propose a dividend of around 1,777 shillings. Our share price is 15,000 shillings. So that dividend is about 13 13% return to a member, which is very reasonable. How do we ensure that members pay their loans? Uh, first of all, from the appraisal point of view, a loan that goes bad goes bad from the appraisal. If you don't do correct appraisal of your members before they borrow, then you run risk of your loans going bad. For us, even for us who are recovered, recovering at source, if somebody is indebted within his colleagues, he has debts with everybody he works with, he has debts left and right, people are calling you left and center, they demanding money from this person. If that person comes and he wants 100 million, it is very clear that this person is like not pay this money because there is already evidence that he has failed to pay his colleagues that he works with. So from an appraisal point of view, this one shouldn't be given money, substantial amounts of money that the person will be tempted not to pay and even desert. So that is the starting point, making sure that you do a proper appraisal, even when the money is being recovered at source. The other one is that at least for as an, as in, an institutional circle, we, we have support from the UPDF where the money is recovered for us, then posted here. So, but the major issue is appraisal. The third issue, for you to be able to make sure that people pay the money. First of all, they should understand that the institution is there to serve them. And that can only be achieved through member engagement and training. When they understand that this institution is there to serve them, they will not want to cheat it. They will instead want to make it grow. So that is where probably other circles are struggling. Because members, you are serving people who don't understand even the direction where you are taking them. So for us, we invest a lot of money in member education, so that a member knows that uh, I have a duty to this institution. And we always remind them to check back where they have come five or ten years ago. Maybe the stories would be so different. We were struggling to educate our children. Today we don't. We educate them. Whether we earn small salaries or not, we educate them. So when a member sees the benefits of being in the circle and what benefits he or she gets directly, they will patronize the circle, they will borrow money and want to pay back. And pay in time so that they get more money. The issue of Trello, you have a right of admission. For the members of the public. Now, that criteria we are going to sit after the AGM. We are going to make a pronouncement in the AGM. And then once they give us, then we come and design the criteria. But most likely, we shall, sign, we shall start with those ones who are salaried, like you, so that we sign an MOU with monitor. We are eh? <laughs> that's why we want. <laughs> uh, that's why we want to sign MOU, because if you have signed an MOU with Wazalendo Soko, you are guaranteeing that this person, if he borrows from us, you will pay the money. You will get, collect the money and pay to us. Okay.